This is Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, Atlanta, Georgia, a congregation full of life and love with a legacy of outreach ministries. Everybody's invited to church in person Sunday at 10 a.m. and online at mountpleasantatl.org. And now, the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, Atlanta. We give honor. We give honor. Amen. We will never be able to thank him enough. But every chance you get, you ought to do just thank him. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God, to you be the glory and the honor. Amen. God bless everybody. Well, it is preaching time. Amen, amen, it is preaching time. I want you to open your Bibles today, amen. Uh, if you would look with me there, First Corinthians, amen, the second chapter of First Corinthians, if you will. First Corinthians, the second chapter of First Corinthians, if you will. I want you to begin looking at verse verse 9 through 16. I know it's on the monitor 1 through 16. But I want you to read the whole chapter at your leisure. But I'm going to carve out amen verse 9 through amen verse 16. These are the words that you will find. It reads, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of God, not the, not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who has known the mind of, lo of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. You may be seated. We ask God to add other blessing to the reading, the hearers, but again, especially to the doers of his word. I want today that you pray with me just for a few minutes. I mean, if you're not too mean, if you don't mind, if you don't mind looking at the person next to you, look them in the eye and tell them, say, what God have prepared for you. Amen. That's what I want to talk about. There are some things that God has specifically, personally, individually, amen, prepared for his people. And today we would find that he is a preparer. He does it before it is needed. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I'm going to say it again. He does it before it is needed. Now, God had enough air in the world before you was born. Amen. But when you got here, he knew you was going to need it. Come on, talk to me, somebody. There's enough food in this world to feed every human being if we do the right thing and do it the right way. There is no lack in God. There is no shortcoming in God. When we do God, the Bible says it like this. It says, God will not withhold no good thing from them 
that love him and walk upright. Did you get that? If you love him and walk upright, you'll have bread on your table. You'll have clothes to go on your back, shoes to go on your feet. And you will have more than you would need. Can I get me a witness in here? These are things that God has prepared for you. Not only that, but he will also give you the desires of your heart. These are wants. These are things we just want. Because everybody in here got more than what you need. Because a lot of stuff you got is just what you want. Can, you give me a witness? Can I get a witness in here? So this is what we are in this text today. And it deals, amen, with the spirit. Look what it says. It, it says here in our text, amen, verse uh, 6, it says, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Amen. Uh, yet not the wisdom of this world, but the prince of this world, amen, who come to know. In other words, if you stay with God principles, Stay with God's word and don't get caught up in the world system. Amen. Because eventually the world system is going to come to know what's going on, even man, in the Middle East, these wars and fighting and murder and killing and all of these things. That's going to come to an end. Amen. Because it is all worldly minded things, but it already was prepared or predicted or even prophesied. Amen, by the power of God. Nothing catch God unprepared, nor does it catch God, amen, shall I say, uh, not ready, amen, or prepared to deal with it. We must understand, amen, that God, amen, is a God of love and he is a God of peace. This is what it says here, amen, when it talks about our God, amen, we must understand, amen, that the God that we serve, he says here in verse 9, which I read in your hearing, but as it is written, our eye have not seen. Now, this is something I want you to get. This is a lesson. If you notice, if you notice, the word I is singular. Did you pay any attention to that? Because when we talk, we say eyes. But what this really means is what you really do know. Just nobody probably ever explained it to you. You're looking at me right now with both of your eyes, you only see one. You're looking at me with two eyes, but you see one me. And this is what, what that is. This is s s some of the spiritual things of God. That when you see double, that means something is wrong with your eyes. When you can see singular, amen, that means you are focused. And God is not going to show you two things at the same time. Can I get a witness in here? If you got 30-30 vision, oh, 20-20 vision, isn't it? Okay, if you got 20-20 vision, amen. I'm going to tell you something about that 30 in a minute. Amen. <laughs> if, if you got 20-20 if you got vision, that, that seems to be, and it teaches us that that is perfect vision, isn't it? But you can only see the natural. You can only see the natural. But there are, amen, eyes of God. Because when you read the Bible, you'll find out, especially in the book of Revelation, we talk about seven eyes, which, which mean complete perfection. I mean, not only do you, you can see, amen, but you can comprehend what you see. In other words, when we say, oh, magnify the Lord with me, that means we have to make God what? Bigger. And how do we do that? By putting both of these eyes on the one God and give him praise and thanks for being who he is. 
Can I get a witness in here? And so he says, your eye have not seen, which suggests that there is more to see than what we have seen. And if you're satisfied with what you have seen and don't want to see no more, then you're going to be living in a world, amen, with limitations. But he's, he's simply suggesting, I've given you man's eye, natural eyes, because there are three, there are three type of eyes. Or uh, shall I say three eyes. One is the natural Second one is the spiritual. The third one is the supernatural. That when God add his super to your natural, you see, I, I wish they had a witness in here. You, you, you can see through the dark and know who it is in the dark. You can see around the corner and know who it is around the corner. Come on, talk to me, somebody. He can give you supernatural vision that nothing can be hidden from you. So he says it right here, and I'll, I'll get out of your way, amen. I, he says it right here. He said that our eye, amen, has not seen, nor our ears heard, neither have it entered into what? The heart of man. Well, let me tell you, that, that, that three things right here, I want to... I want to share with you right quick. Amen. Uh, 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 when you talk about your eye has not seen. There are higher heights. There are deeper depths in Christ Jesus. You'll never be able to see until God open up your eyes. Can I get a witness in here? See, look what he says. He said that, 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 that the carnal mind or the natural eyes cannot see the things of the spirit. You read the Bible and you tell, you, you say right quick, uh, 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 I don't understand it. Well, that means you don't see it. You, you, you don't see it. But this is what you have to do. Now watch this. If the Bible and the Bible was written by holy men that were filled with the spirit, and as the Holy Spirit moved on their mind, they began to write. Now, how in the world can you, with your natural eyes, just pick up the Bible and go to reading when it was written in the Spirit by the men that were filled with the Spirit, and you just ran and picked up the Bible? Well, maybe you ought to pray and ask God to fill you with his spirit so that when your spirit that God have given you, he adds some supervision to it. So then you begin to see and then you say, you know, I understand that now. What God has prepared for you. We miss out on so much because we do not see the God that we serve. I'm talking about we don't see how he loves us. And then we don't love him like we ought to love him. This is, this is a problem because he said, how in the world can you say you love me and hate your fellow man who sat on the same pew with you? He said, there is no, he, this is how he said, he said, you are a liar and the truth ain't in you. So I don't care how many Bibles you carry under your arms and how many crosses you wear around your neck. I, I don't care how many tattoos you got, amen, on your chest or even on your heart. I don't care about all of that. All of that stuff is just, just temporal stuff because only what we do for Christ is going, going to last. So the Bible tells us these things, amen. We got to understand that. That the God that we serve have more in store for us than we could receive. That's what he said. Your eye have not seen. Your ear have not heard. And your heart have not received. The, th the great things that God have, what? Prepared for them that love him. If you want to open the door of God to your prosperity, you better learn how to love God in spite of what men may have said or doing to you.
Because if you let the Lord uh, let the Lord have his way with you, amen, he'll show you how to deal with your enemies. You don't have to fight. Come on. No, no, put on the whole arm of God. This is what he says in the book of Ephesians. And then watch what he gives you as your weapon. This is what he said. He said, he said, and above all, take the shield of faith. That's part of your protection. Then he said, told us, amen, he talks about praying, which is what? The sword of the spirit. So you pray for your enemies. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. And God, through his word, will cut. Y'all going to help me in a minute. God in his word will punish. God in his word will speak to the heart of those that got hard heart even up in here. Can I get me some help here? I don't mean to hold you too long, but I want to know that we must understand that God is giving us to know that there's much more that we can enjoy rather than being around here with wind in our jaws. Can I get a witness in there? My brothers and sisters, the enemy, he does not want you to have your joy. The Bible declared that Satan, amen, is as a roaring lion. He, man, he going about seeking whom he may devour. Satan get a joy out of you sitting up in here rolling your eyes at somebody. He get a joy out of seeing you, amen, testify on Sunday when you're up in front of the church and soon you get to your pew, you got wind in your jaws mad at somebody. Amen. He's simply saying, amen, that he got you distracted. You cannot see. You don't have 20-20 vision because you, you're trying to be with God, and then also you're trying to be on the devil's side because of the fact you allow yourself to be used by the enemy. So he says here in verse 10, but God, amen, has revealed them unto us by his spirit, Amen. Notice what it said. He reveals it to us by his spirit. Can I get a witness in here? I'm going to say it again. He reveals it to us by his spirit. Verse 9 and 10 gives us the natural thing. Look what he says. He talk about things here. He says, but as written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man. Look at it. The thing. Somebody said the thing. That God have what? Prepared for them that love him. But watch this. But God has prepared, but God has revealed unto them by his spirit, for the spirit searches what? Somebody say all things. Okay. Uh, yea, even then what? The deep thing. Come on, talk to me. So he gives us three types of spirit. Not one is the natural one. Amen. The second one, amen, is the spiritual one. And then the third one is the deep things. That's why he says in verse 9, he said, amen, the things. But then he says in verse 10, amen, all things. Then he turned around and add to it a deep thing. There are some things you won't get not unless you fast and pray. There are some things you won't get until you, amen, make up in your mind that you're really serious with your relationship with God. So he tells us these things, and he says it in a matter of fact, in verse 11, he said, for what man knoweth the things of man? Yeah, you went to school. Those are man things. Yeah, you got, you, 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 you doctorate, you PhD, you, 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 you a master of this. That's, that's God's stuff. And nothing is wrong with that. Not one thing wrong with it. But when you try to make that thing be, be God thing, amen, I want you to know you're dealing with the wrong thing. Can I get a witness in here? Because, amen, at the end of the day, I believe I heard Paul say, amen, that he was able to speak in nine different languages fluently. Amen. But he said, I count it all dung. And I want y'all to know dung, D-U-N-G, dung. Y'all call it something else. They start with a D, though. Amen. I just want you to know. You get to know that. And you study that and when you get home, okay? <laughs> just D-U-N-G. Just search it out and see what it is. Paul said, I count everything that I've earned as dung, amen, just to get to know Jesus Christ. He said, the power of his resurrection. Because to know him, amen, is to be ahead of the whole game. Because the Bible tells us, and Jesus, amen, told us that without him, we could do nothing. But then he said, with him, we can do all things. 
So it is today, my brothers and sisters, as I hurry on to a close, I want you to know, amen, that when God be for you, he is more than the world against you. And you ought not to allow anybody to get on your nerves so much until you don't want to come to church. I wish I had a witness in here. You ought not let anybody get on your nerves so much until you spend your time in church with your fist ball up and your face, amen, disfigured. You ought to, amen, have a purpose for being here because it is the house of prayer. It is a place to where we come to, amen, to worship, amen, and praise God. It is a place to where we can come and testify and tell our brothers and sisters what the Lord did for you, amen, days in this last week. You ought to be able to tell him, say, amen, the Lord bless me beyond measures. I didn't, amen, know what the Lord was doing, but I want you to know if he got, amen, you in his hand, he will prepare a way of escape for you. That's why you ought not to get, amen, mean-spirited when things are not going like you think they ought to go. Because he says, here your eye have not seen. But you ought to, amen, read, amen, Romans 8, 28, where it tells us that we know all things. Work together for them that love the Lord. And if you love him, amen, it is a prerequisite to what, amen, God will in turn do for you. Because the mere fact, amen, when you love Jesus, amen, you got to understand that he died for you. Amen. He, amen, came through 40 and two generations to save a wretch like you and save a wretch like me. What that mean? That mean, amen, three things you got to do, amen, to reap the benefits of God. Number one, you got to love God. Can I get me a witness in here? That's why it tells us in the book of Genesis, the book of Exodus, where it tells us to love the Lord with all of the heart, all of thy mind, soul, and thy spirit. And if you love him, amen, the Bible declared there'll be some commandment that you will keep. There'll be a God that you will serve and that you will praise and lift up high. There will be a God that you're not ashamed to tell people that I do love the Lord. Amen, because of his goodness and his mercy. You wouldn't be ashamed to tell people on your job, amen, that the Lord saved me. Now, I don't know what day he saved you, but my day, amen, was May the 29th. Y'all going to help me in a minute. May the 29th, 1975. Amen, I met Jesus, amen, one Thursday evening. Amen. A wretch undone I was. I was too, amen, mean, amen, and too low down to die. But I still wasn't fit to live. But I'm so glad that I serve a God that looked beyond all of my fault and then supplied everything that I needed. I heard grandmama and them used to say to God that I serve. He may not come when you want him to. But if you keep on lifting up his name, if you keep on, amen, clapping your hand, and you keep on calling up him on the telephone, a prayer, he'll come by and see about you. He'll let you know, amen, that yes, weeping may just endure for a night, but you'll know you'll have joy in the morning. I'm so glad tonight to report to you that God is a good God. Amen. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endure to all generations. In other words, if you serve him, he'll pay you. Amen. Some dividend with peace and some joy. Because the joy that the Lord give you, I want you to know the world can't give it. And then you ought not to let the world take God's joy from you. You ought not to smile because everybody else is smiling. You ought to smile because the goodness of God is dwelling on the inside. Don't nobody know your story like you know your own story. If you know God, amen, been bread when you were hungry, that, that's your story. And you ought not to let anybody rob you of your praise. Because when you were going through trials and tribulation, the world didn't have your uh, name on their mind. 
but God was looking right at you. And that's why, amen, Paul says it like this. He said, but God had revealed some things to you, and he has revealed some things unto me. Some things you can't tell folks. You just got to learn how to keep it on the inside. Ponder about it. Meditate on it. Think on it. And then praise God. If you ever really want to look foolish, praise God when the folk don't know why you're praising. Amen. If you praise God when everybody's sitting around looking up in the air, filing their, amen, fingernails and, and looking down at a piece of paper. I come by the night to tell you, amen, it's no secret what God can do. What he done for others, he can do it for you. I come by to tell Mount Pleasant on this second Sunday, amen, in November. You better be thankful before Thanksgiving get here. You better be thankful before, amen, New Year's get here. You better be thankful before Christmas get here. You ought to learn how to look around and call yourself blessed, highly favored, and got peace in your spirit. Because, my brothers and sisters, I am a living witness to God that we serve. Not only will he bless you once, but he'll bless you twice. If not only will he bless you once, but he'll bless you twice. Y'all going to get it. Not only will he bless you once, but he'll bless you twice. Not only will he bless you once, but he will bless you twice. And if you can't keep up counting how many blessings you got, you ought to look over at your neighbor and say, he been good to me, brought me from a long way. Amen. Brought me from the rocking of my cradle down to this now present time. Well, the second thing, not only you must love Jesus, you must trust Jesus. That's why it says, trust in the Lord. Lean not to thine own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge the Lord, and he will direct your path. Yes, you want a GPS, you better talk to Jesus. He'll order your steps. He'll, amen, take you down in and through the valley. Then take you high up on the mountain. Amen. You may be fearful of being high, but I want you to know Jesus is on the main line. And if there's anybody in here that, amen, know you can get a prayer through, you ought to tell yourself, thank God for hearing my prayer. Because when I was down and couldn't get myself up, when I was burdened and couldn't get rid of the heavy load, in stepped the power of the Holy Ghost and said, I brought you this far, and I'm able to even take you further. Look at your name and tell your name, say, if God brought you to it, he's able to take you through it. So you better learn how to hold on to his unchanging hand. Because the power of God will provide and make a way for you. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but you better learn how to trust Jesus. What you mean, the word trust means you got to put it all in his hand. You just can't give him a little bit and expect an a lot. But if you put everything in his hand, I want you to know the Bible says no man can pluck you out of his hand. Because when the Lord reach down and pick you up and place you on a solid rock higher than your enemies. I want to somebody in this church to say thank you, Jesus, for being mighty good to me. Because I don't deserve what you done gave me. Because I've been wretched and then I've been low down. But I got news for you. When praise go up, your blessing will start coming down. Look and tell somebody that, amen, it's amazing grace. How sweet it all sounded that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but right now, yes, the Lord have given me, amen, clarity to let everybody know I can see clearly through the storm and the rain. 
I can see clearly, amen, through, amen, the problems in life. But, amen, I found out the more I praise him, the better he makes me feel, the more he lets me see. He let me see my enemies. Sometime it come through a dream. Sometime it come through a prayer that is being answered in my dream. Let the church say yes. If the Lord been good to anybody, I man, if you want to be number one, to say he been good to you, then I got to be number two, to say he been good to me too. Let the church say yes. I come to tell y'all on this day that the Lord have made it. We ought to rejoice and then be glad in it. You don't have to wait till the battle is over, but you can shout right now. I dare you to think of one or two things that the Lord did for you and you hadn't told anybody, but in a private praise, Amen. You ought to let the world know that the Lord is good and he's good to me. And I don't care who know about it because every time I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for me, I know one thing. He's already prepared a way of escape. He's already have pre-approved. That's why I'm not going to worry about what you say about me. Because I found out that Jesus got the last saying. And in one of these old days, I don't know what day it's going to be, but I'm going to be glad to hear his welcome voice. Said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Ain't God all right? If anybody in here know you got to pray, you better start getting it out because tomorrow is not promised to you. And all you have is a right now praise. Look at your neighbor and say, we come this far by faith. We came through the hills and through the valley. Ain't God all right? If I get two or three people, they're not ashamed up in here to tell the Lord thank you for waking me up early this morning and starting me on my merry way. I'm so glad the food he gave me to eat, clothes he gave me to wear, the little money in my pocket, but more than money, more than food, I still got my joy because the joy of the Lord Heals my happiness and heals my strength tonight. Anybody know Jesus? If you really know his name, you ought to tell your neighbor, if you will, go on and talk about me. If you will, go on and lie on me. If you will, dig ditches for me. I got somebody that sit high but then look low just in case you don't know who I'm talking about I just gotta call him by his name his name is Jesus can't you help me call him Jesus what is his name I said what is his name if anybody over here know him you ought to lift up your hand and say, I'm so glad I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He appeared my every groan. And every time, every time trouble may rise, I can hasten unto his throne. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? I don't care. What jail uh, man might put uh, me in, I don't care what handcuffs uh, he may put on my wrist. Uh, 
I don't care what chain he may put on my feet. The Lord have already prepared my way of escape. And he all right if you really know him and he been good to you and ain't too mean. Shake your neighbor here. Look your neighbor in the eye. He said, I'm so glad that trouble don't last. Not always. Because the Lord that I serve, he woke me up early this morning. He started me on my way. And you're all right. I feel like telling God again. Thank you uh, for my journey. Uh, yeah, yeah. Say yeah. If you say yeah, anybody in here got a yes pray? Uh, got a yes pray? Got a yes pray? Anybody in here say yeah to your will? Uh, yeah to your word? Uh, yeah. Do your way, won't he do it, won't he do it, if you know he'll do it, tell somebody, I don't care what tomorrow bring, cause I know one thing, who hold tomorrow, his name is Jesus, do you know him, do you know him, if you know him, say yeah, say yeah, can't nobody, do you like Jesus? He's the wrong time, on time God. Yes, he is, and you're all right. Jesus loves me. This I know, for his Bible tell me so. Father, I stretch my hand under thee. No other helper that I know. He'll rock you in his arm, won't he do it, won't he do it, say yeah, I say yeah, won't he do it, he'll walk with you, he'll talk with you, he'll put Ryan in your feet, clap it in your hand, won't he do it, Say yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll prepare. I said he'll prepare. Like he said in the 23rd Psalm, he'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Let the church say yeah, say yeah. What God have prepared just for you, 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 just for you. He got it in his hand. He got it in his cap. Can't nobody. Get what God got for you. Just remember, God have prepared it just for you. You've been listening to the Mount on the Go podcast. If you've been enjoying the word, please consider donating to the Mount Pleasant ministry. We have various ways that you can give to the ministry to allow us to become better in our pursuit of delivering God's word to you. You can give via PayPal at mtpleasantatl.org. You can give via Zale, info at mtpleasantatl.org. You can also give via Square and Givelify. For Givelify, just search for Mount Pleasant Baptist Church with our address, 17 Melvin Avenue, Southeast Atlanta, Georgia, and you'll be in the right place. In addition to all these options, you're always welcome and invited to grab an envelope and have cash or checks sent to the church, whose address is again, 17 Melvin Avenue, Southeast Atlanta, Georgia. For questions, comments, and concerns, feel free to email us at info at mtpleasantatl.org. That's info at mtpleasantatl.org. 
You can also visit our website, www.mountpleasantatl.org, to follow us on YouTube and Facebook for the video version of the podcast. Our services are live every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you are more than welcome to visit the church in person every Sunday at the same time. Thank you so much for listening.